Hi, and welcome back to SelfCAD. This is part six of our 3D Modeling 101 series, where we discuss the fundamental concepts of 3D modeling. In parts one through five, we covered everything from creating a new project to creating different shapes in the editor. Please check them out if you haven't, as they'll be important to our discussion today. We will start by reviewing the more complex primitives, then show how to create them from scratch, and then how to modify them for different results. We'll start with the capsule. How to create a capsule from scratch. When you look at it, a capsule looks like a cylinder with half of a sphere added on top and bottom. Of course, we have a specific tool for creating capsules, but combining shapes to create more complex objects is an important skill for anyone interested in 3D modeling. As you know from the previous episode, you can combine objects with stitch and scoop. So to create a capsule, we can place a sphere on the floor, add a cylinder at a height that covers half of the sphere, and then add another sphere so that its center intersects with the top of the cylinder. The result looks like a capsule, but all those objects are still separate which is why we need to combine them into a single volume with Boolean tools. To do that, you must select all three objects, open Stitch and Scoop, and select the Union option. Boolean is by far the best way of combining shapes and it also removes the intersected parts. But in some cases, there's a much faster way of creating a much better topology structure. In this case, we can convert a sphere directly into a capsule. How to convert a sphere into a capsule? A sphere by itself has all the details we need to transform it into a capsule. To start the modification, we need to select half of the sphere. And the best tool to do this is the cube selection. We just need to select 50% from the bottom and finalize the selection. This tool created a perfect cut in the middle of the sphere. And now all we have to do is move the selected part up to get a perfect capsule. As you can see, this approach is much faster than doing it with stitch and scoop. And more importantly, it gives a much better topology structure when compared to the previous method. Now let's see what else we can do with this technique. Capsule top and bottom settings. Another interesting feature of the capsule generator is that you can set a different radius from the top and bottom. Similar options are available for cylinders as well, and we can mimic those features by selecting the top or bottom part of the shape, opening the scale tool, and using the center scale option to get the same result as in the generator. For example, we could use this technique to convert a sphere into a UFO. You just need to select the middle part of the sphere and use transformation tools for the desired effect. Converting a cylinder into a cone. When you look at it, a cone looks like a cylinder with the top plane collapsed at a single point. We have a tool that allows you to generate cones by itself but we'll use this as an example to showcase a few topology deformation techniques you could use for different purposes. We'll start with a simple cylinder. Select the top polygon and then scale it to zero. As a result, we get a nice cone, but the overall shape still has all the faces and vertices from the collapsed polygon, making the object non-manifold. To remove them, we need to use the Geom Clean tool and remove the duplicates to fix the problem. And with that, we get a perfect cone, using taper to collapse the cylinder. The previous method works perfectly well for basic cylinders, but once you add horizontal segments, you will start deforming them into shapes other than a cone. In such cases, you should look into our deformation tools and use taper. All you need to do is drag the gizmo until you collapse all faces without making them intersect, and then remove the duplicates with Geom Clean as we did before. 
This approach does not require selecting any faces because we taper the entire object. But it does not mean that you can't use it to taper parts of the object. Quite the contrary, you can use it to create completely different shapes. But in such cases, it might determine just how much you need to taper to avoid intersections, especially when working with more complex shapes. That's where our collapse tool becomes irreplaceable, tapering parts of the object. The easiest way to taper parts of the object is with the collapse tool. To access it, you need to select the regions you want to collapse first. Open the snap tool, enable the collapse vertices option, and click on the center of the polygon. The cursor will snap to the middle of the region so you don't have to worry about the object not being symmetrical. Understanding the marquee selection tool. You might have noticed we used a specific method to select the edges to collapse them just now. It's called marquee selection. It selects only visible parts of the object by default, but switching to the wireframe only display mode will behave like an x-ray selection tool. Other softwares like Blender have separate x-ray selection tools, but SelfCAD reuses different tools for multiple purposes to make their use more intuitive. In practice, you can switch display modes between solid and wireframe to select just the outside of the model or simultaneously select the front and back. Reusing tools in this way allowed us to avoid unnecessary clutter and keep the UI as user-friendly as possible, while still offering all of the advanced features available in more expensive software. Marquee Selection Tips Here are two more tips about marquee selection before we move on. If you drag select from right to left, you will select everything in the highlighted area even if it only partially overlaps with the object or the region. However, dragging from left to right will select those objects or regions completely covered by the selection square. If you hold the control key while using drag selection, you will deselect objects instead of selecting them. Of course, the number one tip applies when deselecting as well. Making a star from a cylinder. Among all of the primitives available in any software, primitives such as cube, sphere, or cylinder are without a doubt the most popular shapes. It's because many of the other objects in 3D either resemble them in some way or are a combination of a few of those shapes. One example would be a capsule being a combination of two spheres and a cylinder or a cylinder being transformed into a cone by collapsing one of its polygons. Now let's see how to transform a cylinder into a star shape to demonstrate another modeling technique. This time we'll create a star starting from a cylinder. Like many other shapes, star has a symmetrical pattern. With this method, you'll learn how to create such patterns quickly and without issues. The process is very easy. Create a cylinder, activate edge mode, and ring select the surrounding edges. Then enable and customize the custom pattern option to skip one edge, and then scale down the edges on the X, Z axis to shape the object into a star. Using the pivot tool, there is another way to create a star. When you look at it, the star consists of skewed rectangular shapes repeated in a circular pattern. Let's see how to create such a pattern. We'll start with a cube and skew it on the Z axis on the left and right plane. And then we'll use the pivot option found in the copy offset tool to create and arrange cubes into a pattern and then combine them with the union tool. In this example, it worked as expected. Still, sometimes such operations can cause issues with stitch and scoop because the polygons on top and bottom were just overlapping, when Boolean works best with intersected, not overlapped volume. Here's another method to combine overlapping shapes if you ever encounter issues with stitch and scoop. This time, we'll start with a profile and pivot it just like before. 
and then we'll merge the copies with the option to cut intersection. And now we'll select and delete the inner parts of the profile, leaving just the outline of the star that we can fill and add thickness to transform it into a 3D object. As you can see, we kept only the necessary parts with this method, but we can use this approach to customize the geometry structure any way we want by adding details. Let's go back to the profile. The star is a triangular pattern, so let's say we want to keep it the same pattern for inner faces. We'll draw two lines across the profile and follow the same steps as before to turn it into a 3D star. As you can see, the inner faces are much more even than before. Now, before we move on, here's one last tip about pivot in copy offset. It uses the center of the plane and rotates the objects around it, so moving the object closer or farther away from the center changes the final shape. And on top of that, you can stack multiple transformations on top of each other in the Copy Offset tool to create more complex and beautiful patterns. Extending Shapes with Extrusion so far, we've covered different methods of modifying shapes and converting them to something else, but they can be limiting. For example, what if the object is missing the necessary details to transform them to your liking? Well, this is what the editing tools are all about. Some of those tools are just for adding details to the object. Some allow you to deform them using the details added previously while others add and deform shapes at the same time. The L shape is a simple planar object. We'll showcase a few of them by working with a simple L shape primitive. The L shape is a simple planar object with inbuilt options to customize the size of both ends. And no matter the size you select, it will always have a nice even cut when both extensions meet in the middle. A simple way to recreate this shape would be to start with a cube. Select two faces or polygons and extrude them with the individual option enabled in the tool settings. You could also extrude them one by one, but this way you can save some time. But either way, we now have a really nice L shape made from a cube. And now, if you want to add that nice even cut where both pieces connect, you can make the cut with our Edit Details tool. Just switch to the Draw option and draw the edge across the original cube. And as you can see, it leaves us with a nice 45 degree cut, as indicated in the text box at the bottom. Drawing in 3D. We already discussed converting 2D drawings to 3D objects by filling them with polygons and adding volume and creating symmetrical objects with specialized tools. Now let's see how to directly draw complex objects in 3D. Now let's check another primitive and see how to recreate it from scratch with 3D Sketch. For this example, we'll use the icosahedron. We will start by drawing just one line at the bottom and then copy and move it up. And then we'll create and rotate two more copies of both lines to form the base of the structure. Now we can group all the lines together and draw connecting edges between all points, completing the wireframe for the icosahedron. And with that done, we can just use the fill polygons to close the profile and convert it into a complete 3D shape. This example shows how you can create complex objects by understanding their structure. You might have noticed we did not use the add thickness as we did in earlier examples, but that's because we managed to draw and fill the object with complete volume. And we use add thickness only when we need to add volume to surfaces. And once we have the volume, we can extend it using extrusion or hollow it and then add thickness. But you never add thickness to an object that already has volume. And that's it for this video. 
We hope that after watching this episode, you'll know how to modify and extend your objects by editing their topology structure and know how to apply those concepts in your own projects. In the following videos, we'll teach you how to fix topology structures and more. Stay tuned!